This video will explain, what is a race condition? What may go wrong if a race condition occurs? And how to prevent, race conditions? Let me use a simple example to explain what a race condition is. In this example, the software configures the Cystic timer to generate an interrupt every half a second. The Cystic interrupt handler toggles the output of pin PB2. After setting up Cystic and initializing GPIO, the main program runs a dead loop. See the previous tutorials for how to set up the system timer, and how to initialize GPIO as outputs. Build the program. Download the program to the board. Push the reset button on the board and start to run the program. Let's look at the output signal on PB2. The output signal is a square wave, with a frequency of 1 Hz, and a duty of 50%. This is exactly what we expect, because the cystic timer toggles the output PB2 every half a second. Now let's make a minor change to the main function. Instead of running a dead loop, at the end, the main function repeatedly toggles, a different GPIO pin, in the same port, let's say, pin PB3. Build the program. Download the program. Reset and run. Now, let's look at the output. The output of PB2 has been changed. And it is not we have expected. Both the signal period and the duty of the output signal has been changed. So, what has happened? A race condition has taken place. In this example, we have two tasks, which toggles two different outputs concurrently. The cystic interrupt handler periodically toggles the output PB2, and the main function repeatedly toggles the output PB3. Let's do a quick review on how software toggles a GPIO output. In a C program, we can toggle an output by performing an exclusive or operation with the bit mask. This simple C statement is not an atomic operation, which means it cannot complete in a single step. It takes multiple instructions to complete. If we translate it into assembly, it involves at least three operations, load, modify, and store. First, load the entire current ODR value, then, flip the target bit, and finally, store the entire updated value back to the ODR register. Similarly, to toggle the output PB3, we need to perform a load, modify, store, sequence of operations. The execution of the cystic interrupt handler and the main function are interleaved over time. The following is one possible interleaving. Suppose the output of both pins is 0 at the beginning. A cystic interrupt is generated. The processor stops the execution of the main function and runs the cystic interrupt handler. The interrupt handler toggles PB2. After the interrupt exits, the main program resumes from where it was stopped and starts the load modify store sequence of operations to toggle PB3. At the end, both PB2 and PB3 are successfully toggled. However, things may go terribly wrong. The following is one example. If the cystic interrupt arrives before the main function complete the load modify store sequence, the processor executes the cystic interrupt handler in response to the interrupt. After the interrupt exits, PB2 has been successfully toggled. However, the old output of pin PB2 is also stored in the register R3. After the interrupt handler completes, the main function resumes the execution. When the main function execute the store instruction, the old output of PB2 is mistakenly written to the ODR register. As a result, the output of PB2 is changed back to zero. At the end, the output of PB2 fails to be toggled. A race condition is defined as, the anomalous behavior of software systems, in which the result depends on, 
the uncontrollable interleaving of concurrent tasks. When two or more tasks manipulate a shared variable concurrently, the result of the execution depends on the particular order in which the manipulation takes place. A race condition is an error behavior. A race condition is analog to a horse race. Two or more computation tasks are in the race. The result is uncontrollable, depending on who wins. The fundamental reason behind a race condition is that modifying a variable is not an atomic operation. Put a different way, the sequence of load modify store operations are not an indivisible operation. How to prevent a race condition from happening? The key idea is to ensure that only one task enters a critical section. A critical section is defined as a section of code in which a task accesses shared variables. First, let's take a look at a specific solution available for GPIO. On STM32, each GPIO port has a BSRR register, which stands for bit, set, reset, register. Writing a bit to zero in BSRR has no impact on the corresponding output. However, writing a bit to one in BSRR can set or reset the corresponding output. Therefore, the BSRR register allows software to set or reset a group of pins atomically, while the state of the other pins are preserved. This shows the implementation of the Sysdic interrupt handler in the main function. This implementation avoids the race condition shown previously. Read the STM32L4 reference manual to find out more information on BSRR. Here, we give a generic solution which avoids a race condition. We define two functions, enter critical section, and leave critical section. Both are inline assembly functions. The first function disables all maskable interrupts. On Cortex-M processors, some interrupts, such as bus fault, are not maskable. The second function enables all maskable interrupts. These are the new implementation of the interrupt handler in the main function. In the main function, before updating the shared variable ODR, it disable all maskable interrupts so that the Sysdic interrupt handler cannot enter the critical section. It enables the interrupts after accessing the shared variable. Similarly, in the Sysdic interrupt handler, it also calls this pair of functions to ensure that the critical section is executed in a mutually exclusive way. In this simple example, the Sysdic interrupt handler does not have to call this pair of functions. However, in a more complex system, calling these two functions to guard the critical section is necessary. For example, another interrupt with a higher urgency may preempt the current interrupt and modify shared variables. A better generic solution is to program the interrupt mask register BASCPRI to disable non-urgent interrupts instead of all interrupts. The function of enter critical section takes a non-zero argument, which is called priority. It programs the BASCPRI register to disable all interrupts, which have a priority value larger than the input argument. Note that, on Cortex-M, a higher priority value represents a lower urgency. In the function of leave critical section, clearing the BSCPRI register to zero enables all interrupts. In this example, the main function sets the priority value of the Sysdic interrupt to 15. The function of enter critical section disables all interrupts with an interrupt value larger than 6. Therefore, if the main function enters the critical section, the Sysdic interrupts are disabled until the main function leaves the critical section. Accordingly, accesses to the ODR registers are mutually exclusive. However, all interrupts with a priority value less than or equal to 6 are not disabled. Please visit the book website for tutorials and project templates.